Today on Running to Him. Phineas is a person we should emulate in our walk with Christ. Today we will read Numbers chapters 25 through 28 and concentrate on chapter 25, 1 through 9. Numbers 25, 1 through 9 says, While Israel remained at Tittim, the people began to play the harlot with the daughters of Moab, for they invited the people to the sacrifices of their gods, and the people ate and bowed down to their gods. So Israel joined themselves to Baal of Peor, and the Lord was angry against Israel. The Lord said to Moses, Take all the leaders of the people and execute them in broad daylight before the Lord, so that the fierce anger of the Lord may turn away from Israel. So Moses said to the judges of Israel, Each of you slay his men who have joined themselves to the Baal of Peor. Then, behold, one of the sons of Israel came up and brought his relatives to a Midianite woman in the sight of Moses and in the sight of all the congregation of the sons of Israel. And while they were weeping at the doorway of the tent of meeting, and when Phinehas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest, saw it, he rose from the midst of the congregation and took a spear in his hand, and he went after the man of Israel into the tent and pierced both of them through, the man of Israel and the woman, through the body. So the plague on the sons of Israel was checked. And those who died by the plague were 24,000. Now, for those of you who don't know, my first name is Phineas. I was named after my maternal grandfather, who received his name from my great-great-grandfather, who named him after Phineas Banning, a, an entrepreneur and honorary general who, after the Civil War, built the seaport at Los Angeles. As a sea captain, my great-grandfather knew General Banning quite well and named my grandfather after him. Interestingly, that naming began a short-lived, three-generational tradition of naming children with an ancestor's full name. Hence, my name is Phineas Banning Blanchard Jacobus, after my grandfather, Phineas Banning Blanchard. Now, the Phineas in our story today, some English translation call him Phineas, was a priest who was the grandson of Aaron, and he was very zealous for the things of God and responded to the sin at Peor with righteous jealousy for God. Now, let's be honest with one another. Even the most zealot or dedicated God follower sometimes slips into sin. Remember Moses when he struck the rock when he was supposed to speak to it. See Numbers 20. Those who are not as zealous, sin can quickly take hold, as was the Israelites' case. We Christians are just as susceptible. And when the Israelites arrived at Peor, they fell into the trap of worshiping with the Moabites. You might remember the Moabites were distant cousins through Lot's lineage. The Israelites began to worship Baal instead, or in addition to, Jehovah. Now, the actions of the Israelites may be like so many of us in the Christian world. At least in modern times, we in the Western world approach Christianity as being a broad umbrella encompassing many denominations and sometimes even other religions or pagan activities. I remember my sister going to a Methodist retreat in the 1960s, and they called it an ashram. That name describes a spiritual retreat location in some Hindu religion. Many liberal Christian denominations are multi-religion where they encourage members to participate in ecumenical religious services. God is not pleased with such activity. Phineas recognized the sinfulness of the situation, and when the man wanted to have sexual relations with that many that woman, as she probably was a temple prostitute, Phineas recognized the situation and killed both of them while they were lying together. God was pleased with its action as the plague was halted. The plague in this case was the heresy of the merging of the Jews into the Canaanite religions. So how are we prostituting ourselves with the world around us? Some of our more liberal Protestant denominations have actively supported homosexual activity. Some brought into the lie that gender is defined by what a person thinks, not by a biological necessity. Sin is rampant in most of our congregations the decline of the United States will only be halted when we who hold Christ dear begin to live our lives as consistent Christians, and we are disregarding the world around us and seeking a stronger relationship with God through Christ. This cannot be accomplished through hate, but rather through a consistent lifestyle. Thank you for listening. We pray that today's devotion was meaningful to you. We would love to hear from you. You can use either Facebook or YouTube to like, subscribe, share, and tell others about us. If you would like to contact us, you can reach me at PhineasJacobus at runningtohim.net.